Good afternoon, and welcome to today's 60-second lecture. I'm Paul Snigowski, the Stephen A. Levin Family Dean of the College of Arts and Sciences. 60-second lectures have been a Penn Arts and Sciences tradition since 2003. In that time, we've heard from our diverse faculty on more than 150 topics, ranging from lost medieval words to unequal life chances to the threat of climate change. As the world faced unprecedented challenges in 2020, the series went virtual and gave scholars an opportunity to share insight and expertise on the global COVID-19 pandemic and the persisting legacy of racism. This spring, we're featuring lectures on a variety of topics. Today, we'll hear from M. Susan Lindy, Janice and Julian Baer's Professor of History and Sociology of Science. Susan's research areas include genetics and genomics, Cold War science and warfare and science. She's an author of numerous articles and books and has taught in Singapore and Japan. Her new book, Rational Fog, Science and Technology in Modern War, examines the intersections of knowledge and violence and the quandaries and costs of modern techno-scientific warfare. Susan's topic today is Weaponizing Truth. I hope you enjoy her talk and that you join us again next Thursday, April 22nd at noon for a special Earth Day lecture. Howard Newkrug, Professor of Practice in Earth and Environmental Science and Executive Director of the Water Center will speak on Good Climate Policy Starts with Good Water Policy. To see our entire library of lectures, visit us on the Penn Arts and Sciences website or the Penn Arts and Sciences Vimeo library. Now, here's Susan Lindy. Many people today mistrust science. There are fears about vaccines, doubts about global warming, even a virtual industry devoted to trying to undermine Darwinian evolution by natural selection. But there is one domain where the truth value of science is virtually unchallenged and utterly unequivocal, and that domain is war. Over the last three centuries, some of the most brilliant people ever to live have weaponized truth. They have participated in projects that burned cities, deployed chemical weapons, sent missiles accurately around the curve of the earth, and produced psychological and biological warfare. The finest properties of the human mind, the key to human exceptionalism, have been weaponized to injure human beings. In the scientific revolution of the 17th century, the novel combination of the labor of the head and the hand, of mind and experiment, philosophy and technology, and theory and the laboratory, were leveraged to produce novel and incredible new insights into nature. This fusion of hand and brain was central to the power and force of that revolution. But there was one kind of labor that was radically excluded from modern science as it came to be. And this was the labor of the heart, caring labor, emotion. This kind of work was associated with mysticism, theology, um, maybe even the labor of women. The radical exclusion of caring labor, the labor of the heart, from systems of knowledge production has had profound consequences. And some of those consequences are made manifest in the stunning arsenals of the modern military industrial academic complex. Today we can see that the long-term damage to environments, to human societies, even indeed to the social and political order produced by this highly technical science, these forms of weaponized truth need at least to be questioned. I would suggest that in leaving behind the labor of the heart, modern science left behind something important, and the time has come in the 21st century for a reassessment and a reintegration of caring labor directly into the truth value of science. If fusing the labor of hand and brain could do so much three centuries ago, perhaps bringing in caring labor, the labor of the heart, 
to modern science could do even more.